Today on the Philly Talk Podcast, we got to talk about the Eagles' first three selections of that 2022 NFL Draft. And no matter what happens in the 2023 Draft or the Eagles' free agency, these guys are going to be huge. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And today, we are talking about the top three picks of the 2022 draft class and how they have an important role in 2023, no matter who we draft in this upcoming draft or who we sign or sign back in the 2023 free agency. And when I say that, people automatically assume, how do you know Cam Jurgens going to be good? How do you know N'Kobe Dean's going to be good? How do you know if Jordan Davis can handle all these snaps? I don't. I'm saying, for good or bad, they are going to play. Now, before we get into it and my take on how they will play, help your boy out and hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new and ding the bell so you can join notification family. Let's get into it. So two days ago, I tweeted this on Twitter. No matter what happens in the NFL draft or free agency for the Eagles, the 2022 draft class will be playing important roles in 2023. Video coming soon. And here it is. N'Kobe Dean will start. Cam Jurgens will start. Jordan Davis will start. Let's start with the guy who played the most in 2022, and that is Jordan Davis. These are the people at his position who are free agents. Linval Joseph, Adamikin Sue, Fletcher Cox, and Javon Hargrave. We know that the two on the end in Adamikin Sue and Linval Joseph are not going to come back. I mean, who knows if down the line in 2023 they're not on the team, we pick them up for, you know, the Howie Roseman special. But Fletch is hearing offers from Cleveland now. The Cleveland Browns not only reached out to Fletch, but they're trying to get the combination of that Super Bowl 17 defensive line and Fletch and BG. We'll talk about that later. But Hargrave's number is not going to be easy for the Eagles to match. 18 million, 20 million, three-year deal. That is probably what him and his agents looking at. Now, could we finagle something? Maybe. Howie Roseman's Howie Roseman. And until he can't get it done, I'm going to assume there's something that can be said, can be done, and hopefully we get Hargrave back. But the more I look at it, the more I think it's not going to be realistic. If the Eagles are putting their sole focus on Jalen Hurts' contract, and I'm not saying he won't take a deal to help out the team. It's in his nature to do that. He got that 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 M.O. He's about his team first. However, the second priority besides the quarterback is C.J. Garner-Johnson. So when you got a guy who's going to command top safety money and a guy who's going to command top D tackle money, you might have to go with the safety. He's younger, so you want to keep him on board. But again, Jordan Davis played 25% of the snaps, 30% of the snaps. He got hurt. Can he be a full-time D tackle with a Hargrave to the right of him? With a rookie draft pick to the right of him? With Milton Williams and whoever else in the rotation? That is a question we got to see. I think Davis was playing really good football before the injury. I think that the, part, the main reason he didn't play multiple snaps is because we had all these guys. Think about this. Howie Roseman invests money in these players, and he wants to get the most production for the money he spent. Fletcher was on his last year. Why sit him for a guy who's going to be on a rookie contract for five years? Red shirt and a guy in today's NFL really does help their growth going forward. It just does. Fletcher was on his last year of his deal. They wanted to play him. Hargrave was on his last year of his deal, not knowing if we were going to be able to get him back. They wanted to play him. They signed both Nadamik and Sue and Linval for this purpose. Jordan Davis was hurt. They're not coming back in 2023. We need to play him. So Davis had an uphill battle because he had multiple players who could play at a high level in front of him. So don't get so sad where it's like, well, Jordan Davis only played 28% of the snaps when he was healthy. Then when he came back, he played even less. 
He had a lot of dogs in front of him on his last year of his contract, and I know for a fact Howie Roseman and the coaching staff looked at that. I believe in Jordan Davis. I believe in his footwork, his hands, that when he starts to play more time, he's going to have to lose a little bit of weight. But he gonna he's, he can be more of a disruptor. I'm not saying he'll ever be a 10-sack guy. But I do think he could be more of a disruptor. And I think going forward, the other defensive tackle that plays in the Eagle system alongside of Jordan Davis has to be similar to what Javon Hargrave is. He's a guy who can stop the run, but he's a pass rushing D tackle. That's where a guy like Kalijah Kansi comes in, where he's a little, little undersized. Short arms, but he got feet. He's quick, and he can be the pass rushing D tackle as Jordan Davis can be the guy who eats up all the blocks. Similar to Milton Williams, he's a little bit soft or a little bit uh, light in, in 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 the body weight to be a D tackle, but it still fits when you got a guy like Jordan Davis there. Now, let's go to the next person who played, who really only played special teams. That is N'Kobe Dean. We got both T.J. Edwards and Kaiser White as free agents. I think it's almost impossible to see both of these guys back. It's even going to be harder to see the guy that I want back in TJ Edwards because Spot Track has him uh, close to $12 million per year, and there's no way the Eagles can match that. Not in a one-year sample size, not in a three-year sample size. I don't think we can match that. Kaiser could be cheaper, but are we going to go out there and get Kaiser to match with you know, a similar playing style of N'Kobe Dean. You know, shifty, quick, wants to hit the holes, but he can't really eat up blocks, and he's not the best at stopping the run. N'Kobe Dean got some playing time as it pertains to special teams. That was good. He did come in and fill a couple uh, a couple plays or a couple games in uh, for mop-up duty, and we saw the potential. Again, I'm not saying N'Kobe Dean is automatically going to come out here and be Micah Parsons. I'm saying that the IQ has always been there. Um, the athleticism is there. He is undersized. And that's why for him to be at his at his best, it, you'd want two guys like Jordan Davis to eat up blocks. When, you're def- when Georgia's defensive line was able to eat up blocks and hold their man, N'Kobe Dean did a great job of, of play recognition, knowing if the play was going to bounce outside and meeting him outside with his speed and or finding the hole the running back went through, being there on time and making a sure hand tackle. And he was able to do that because as a linebacker, you want to be able to hit the gap and make your move. You do not want to have to shed a blocker and then make a tackle. But don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he can't shed blocks. He just doesn't do that like, like tremendously. But I did see him shed a block and tackle one-handed the biggest running back in the game in Derrick Henry. He shed a block and tackled Derrick Henry with one hand. So it can be done. Again, I think if you look at N'Kobe Dean as a player, he has the tools. It was always the size and the shoulder that kept him from going in the first round. There was a reason that scouts and, and other people had him mocked to go similar to Devin Lloyd and late in the first round. Again, there's so many things that transpired that dropped him to the third. I do believe that once he's asked to play linebacker, which he will, because, again, mind you, this video is to say all three of these guys are going to play heavy minutes. Well, Jordan Davis will because we're losing four or three guys at his position. He's up next, redshirted. N'Kobe Dean will play because we're going to lose two linebackers or at least one linebacker. And that, again, like Jordan Davis, is what was keeping N'Kobe Dean off. Even if N'Kobe Dean was showing some things, was he showing more than Kaiser? Was he showing more than TJ? And Howie Roseman is looking at the situation like TJ's on the last year of his deal. Let's get the most out of him. We got N'Kobe for four years. Kaiser is on a one-year deal. Let's get the most out of him. We got N'Kobe Dean for four years, and red shirting does help. N'Kobe Dean, four years. Jordan Davis, five years. These guys, one year. Let them play. Let them learn. Let them develop into the Georgia boys we know they can be. And last but not least, Cam Jurgens, the only offensive guy who's going to come in second year and have to play. But wait, Mike, Kelsey might come back. Cool. If Kelsey comes back, well, Cam Jurgens got to slide into right guard. Now, the Eagles could draft a guard later in this 2023 draft, but is he going to be better than Cam Jurgens? I doubt it. Isaac Samalu is going to get top dollar 
for an offensive lineman, whether it's the Jets, whether it's the Bears, whether it's the Bengals, whether it's somebody, he's going to get paid. We're not going to be able to bring him back. Now, if both these guys lose, well, now you're in a little pickle because you slide Karim Jurgens at, at, at center, and now you have to pick up a new player to play guard. Is it Jack Driscoll? We do have a thing called Jeff Stoutland University. Stoutland University is real. However, if we do retain Kelsey, that you slide Cam Jurgens at right guard, his second year in the NFL doesn't have to be playing center, and he's playing against two Hall, playing on, alongside of two Hall of Fame players, which will help his game. Look, I'm not trying to downplay Isaac Salmalu because he's a good player, but playing with Jason Kelsey to your left and Lane Johnson to your right is going to elevate your game too. They're going to pick up slack when you need it to be picked up, and again. I think Sam Malu is a good player. No if, and, or buts about it. But sliding Cam Jurgens, a guy who can get to the second level like Kelsey, alongside of Lane and Kelsey, I think is going to be huge for his development, his play. It's going to give him confidence. And again, he's going to play. We saw Cam Jurgens come in on a couple different plays when we needed to get to the second level. He did take a couple snaps in this uh, uh, previous 2022 season. N'Kobe Dean did take some snaps in the 2022 season. And Jordan Davis did play, uh, uh, you know, a, a third of the snaps. So to be redshirted with all these guys in front, Fletch, Hargrave, Linval, um, Nadama and Sue in front of Davis while he played, that helped him. And it's going to get him right for 2023. Kaiser White and TJ Edwards playing the way they did in front of N'Kobe Dean helped him. And it's going to get him right to play in 2023. And Cam Jurgen being picked by Stoutland, being picked by Kelsey, watching Kelsey, and now possibly stepping in for Isaac Samalu, where he got two studs to the left and right, is going to help him. So as much as everybody says, how do we know and why are we believing in these guys? Were you happy when you picked Jordan Davis? Did the scouts say Jordan Davis was a monster? Did every other team want Jordan Davis? Yes. He was behind pretty darn good players who were at the end of their contract. Jordan Davis on the Eagles for five years. Fletch, Hargrave, Sue, Linval, one, and maybe some more. It was right to play them. Kaiser White and Kobe Dean, same thing. One-year deals, ended a contract. It was right to play them. Cam Jurgen not going to start over the best center in the game. I said Malu was playing great, too. It was right to play him. But now these guys are leaving. So all three of these guys are going to play. I want to know from you, how do you feel? Give me your confident level. If you don't want to comment, at least drop the muscle emoji in the chat. You know, the muscle emoji. But let me know your confident level in Jordan Davis, N'Kobe Dean, and Cam Jurgens. One, two, and three. Most confident, second most, third most. If you're confident in all of them, let me know why and, and how you feel about it. But again, for good, bad, or ugly, these guys have to play. So when I say it, it's not like, well, how do you know they're going to play good? I don't know. I believe in them. I believe that the main reason they didn't get more time or any time was because there's good players in front of them. And you know how I know there's good players in front of them? Because if TJ, if TJ Edward gets $12 million, that's good. That means that he's a really good linebacker. If Hargrave gets twenty million, that means he's a really good D tackle. If Isaac Samalu gets fifteen million, that means he was a really good offensive line. Cam Jurgen is not going to get in front of a fifteen million dollar offensive line. And Kobe Dean ain't going to get in front of a twelve million a year t uh, uh, a linebacker while being a little hurt and undersized. And Jordan Davis is not going to get in front of a twenty million dollar D tackle. They want to become that pay wise. But I think they have the talent to become better skill-wise. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Remember, tonight I will be going live. Actually, I got to check something. I don't know if I'm going to go live tonight with the Jan app at 7 p.m. I might see if I can message them and push it back because I have a crazy busy schedule today. So I might rather do Monday at 7 o'clock, but I got to I gotta talk with Jan and see that. But the link will be in the description. And the link will be in the pinned comment section, so you can access it either way. Click the link, sign up, 
and make sure you use promo code. The promo code will be listed in the description in the pinned comment section. It helps me out. It lets Jan know that Philly Mike brought you, and we could chop it up barbershop style tonight at 7 or tomorrow at 7. Just stay tuned with the community posts and all that, and, uh, you know, we rock with it. Plus, a couple of y'all reached out to me on Twitter saying, Mike, when are you going to do the live play-by-plays for the Sixers? I did a community post for that, but if you made it this far, 15 minutes and 30 seconds, let me know in the comment section if you want to do some live play-by-plays for the Sixers. Again, it's all Philly over here. Eagles, Sixers, Phillies, and I don't really know about hockey, but I'll have to just say Flyers. You know how I mean. You know what I mean. Until next time, you know what time it is. Leave all your thoughts in the comment section. We out.